What is up, Avodo 8 Warriors, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about squat flexibility, mobility. I know you guys are working on it. Many of you out there are working on squat flexibility. It is a tough one to crack. And today I want to share with you a very effective exercise, just one exercise that is going to help develop your squat flexibility further. So without further ado, let's jump into today's video. All right, so that exercise in question is the split squat. Now, this isn't just a lunge. It may look like just a lunge, but if you stick around in today's video, I'm going to explain to you the reasons why it's not just a lunge, the kind of technique that you want to perform this exercise to get the most out of it, and the reasons why it's going to be so effective. So first of all, let's cover why this exercise is so good at developing squat flexibility. And there's a few elements for this. The first element is the ankles. The ankles is usually the biggest hold up when it comes to squat flexibility and it tends to hold people back the most. The ankles need to flex to be able to balance out the different levers in the lower body as we go down to that squat position. If you're somebody taller and have longer levers, such as myself, you're going to actually need more dorsiflexion, more range of motion in the ankles to balance out that squat. And in some cases, in a lot of cases, this means that the knees will need to go past the toes. And this is not a bad thing. This is, in fact, a very good thing. And to be honest, just an essential human movement if we look at pretty much any sporting activity. So the split squat incorporates this in by utilizing and making you use your dorsiflexion. When we're doing the split squat, we want to think about the movement being not like a lunge where we go up and down like an elevator, but instead we're gonna go up and down diagonally like an escalator. What this means is we put an emphasis on that forward lean and trying to push that front knee over the toes and really challenge our range of motion in dorsiflexion. This over the period of weeks and months of doing reps with this exercise will actually develop your range of motion and also strength in this more extreme dorsiflex deep knee flexion position. I've got particularly good ankle flexibility, so if you have tight ankles, it's not necessarily gonna look like this. So you just wanna make sure that you're challenging this range of motion and pushing it, but you don't want to let the heel raise off the floor. We wanna be using that dorsiflexion. Aspect number two, I kind of touched on just a second ago, and that is training deep knee flexion. So this is the hinging of the knee joint. And usually in a squat position, we don't necessarily get past 90 degrees unless we are particularly flexible. And oftentimes we don't necessarily condition that area, just like the ankle, we need to get strong in that extreme range of motion. So we're doing a squat squat, we can actually train our body to get stronger in the position where the knee becomes more flexed than we can do in a squat if we're not quite flexible enough. We can condition things like the vastus medialis, which are gonna help support knee stabilization, and it's gonna improve our knee structure and health. The last aspect to this exercise and why it's so good is it's gonna provide a bent leg stretch for the adductors and hamstrings without allowing the pelvis to tuck under. Now this is in relevance to the butt wink that we have with the squat. Now the butt wink isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I did wanna create the flexibility so we don't necessarily need it, especially just in a standard squat position. Now the nice thing about the split squat is because we have that training leg, that back leg behind us, it's not actually gonna allow us to tuck that pelvis under because we've got one leg in extension. So what this means as we go down diagonally and forward, we're gonna be pushing ourselves into that deep knee flexion position. And this is actually gonna create a bent leg stretch on the hamstring and the adducts. It's exactly the same as we would get if we were in the bottom of a squat position. It's slightly less intense because it's just one leg, but it will help develop that range of motion around the groin area, whilst also reinforcing that good lordotic spine position. So when we're doing this, we wanna think about staying upright with that torso position to really maximize the stretch here on the bent leg adductor and hamstring. So that is kind of the three reasons why it's gonna tackle those three essential points for improving our squat flexibility, ankles, knees, and a little bit of the hips. How exactly do we go about performing this exercise so we get the most bang for our bucks? So I've already kind of touched on the most important point, which is this is not a lunge. This is not a vertical movement, it is a diagonal movement. It's an escalator, not an elevator. That's probably the most important key to getting the most out of this exercise as we're going down at that position, thinking about not only going down, but also traveling forward, pushing that knee over the front foot, and staying nice and upright with the torso to get a stretch over the front leg, over the ankle, and also the hip flexor of the back leg. Because this is not an easy position, it still requires some level of flexibility. So if this feels hard for you, if this was tough for you on a flat surface, then we can help improve that by performing a front foot elevated split squat. So in this case, we would elevate the front foot by about 10 to 15 centimeters at most, 
and we'd simply perform the same exercise. We're going to demand a little bit less dorsiflexion to get deeper down into the position, but it's still going to have a good stretch and effect on the other areas that are important during this exercise. As we get a little bit more flexible, we can either reduce the amount the front foot is elevated or eventually we're just going to get to performing this on the floor. Once we're on the floor, we feel pretty comfortable. There is one way in which we can make this a little bit more extreme and that is by performing a deficit split squat. In this instance, we would elevate both the front and the back foot so there is a gap in between us in which the knee can sink down a little bit deeper. We then perform exactly the same movement, but this time it allows just for that little bit extra range of motion right in the bottom of the split squat. This one is by no means essential, but it's kind of a nice addition, and a nice little twist on the actual main exercise. Uh, but in general, doing this exercise is well worth your time. You can perform this one just for reps. It really doesn't matter how many you're gonna do it for. You could do it in the strength rep range, like that three to five rep range. You could do it equally on the higher end of the spectrum, that 10, 12 or 14 reps. The key is focusing on developing range of motion. If we're gonna use this exercise to help develop our squat flexibility, then we need to focus on using the range of motion and trying to increase that, which means we might need to go a little bit lighter on the weight. But given some patience with this exercise, using it consistently for weeks, as I say, or months, you're gonna see an improvement in your squat flexibility. One thing that is important to consider is this is not a squat. So whilst this is a useful exercise to develop your squat flexibility, I would highly recommend adding in before or after in your routine, wherever you want to do it, an actual squat using the range of motion that we're trying to develop, using the pattern that we're trying to develop, whether you do that with heels elevated, whether you do that to a box, whatever is gonna work for you so that you can do some form of squat, use this exercise alongside it and see that range of motion improve over time. But that is basically it for this week, guys. If you want some more guidance on how to develop your squat flexibility and how to get stronger and more flexible legs, then we've just released the squat program in my app, Tribe, in which this exercise plays a key role in that program. If you wanna grab that, as well as all the other programs that are available on there, whether you're developing skills, handstands, more flexibility, building muscle mass, we've got a whole bunch of programs for them, and they'll be linked in the description down below. Whilst you're down there, why not let me know about your own squat flexibility? What do you do for your squat flexibility are you going to give this exercise a go do you find it helpful let me know in the comment section down below there is also the like button if you want to show that you enjoyed this video you want to support the channel right next to it is that subscribe button if you want to join the bodyweight warrior tribe but that has basically been it for this week guys i'll catch you in the next episode have a strong week and